Hey guys, this is week four, day one, we're going to exploring God's word. So, from the fall to the flood. So now Adam and Eve, they got kicked out of the garden, and they're having to live with their choices. Because even when we do stuff wrong, we got to, or right, we got to live with the repercussions of it. In this case, Adam and Eve did something wrong. And life's hard, Adam's working hard, sweating, trying to make a living. And Eve, she gives birth to Cain, Abel and Cain. Abel was first. No, let's mess it up. And it was hard on her. She was in pain like the uh, God had said. No. Cain, uh, Abel and Cain, they were brothers. And they were kind of opposites. Cain worked out in the field. He was more the he ran, he'd take care of the sheep and the cows and everything. But Cain, Cain was, uh, I guess he worked in a different field. And he grew stuff. He was growing all sorts of things. Onions, tomatoes, yeah. apparently purple flowers. And, uh, and they were opposite to each other. But just because they're opposite don't mean they can't get along, huh? They're supposed to still work together. Uh, we know that uh, Adam went and he taught Cain and Abel uh, how to properly worship God. One of them that God had said, that anything you offer when you do a sacrifice, it has to have a blood sacrifice. Blood is the only way to get rid of sin. So, uh, someone's blood has to be shed. Oh, and they knew this. That's important too. Because later on, we'll find out that Jesus' blood was shed for us. Oh, instead of just animals. Because animals don't give us permanent ones. But a spotless, perfect lamb of God would give us perfect, uh, would give us forgiveness of sins. But that's a different lesson. One day, though, they go and Cain and uh, Abel and Cain went to go offer up their sacrifice. And Abel brought the, brought the best sheep of his flock. Brought the best one out and it says, hey. And he offered up to God. He says, here, God, this is my sacrifice. But Cain, he just got stuff out of his field. You know, I'm going to give you what I got. And he went and just give him here. Here's some fruits, some vegetables. This, and he thought he was doing right. He's like, I'm giving you what I worked on. But we got to make sure, though, we do things the right way. It's not what we want. It's what God wants. You're offering stuff to God. We got to do it God's way. Huh. All right. Well, Cain, Abel's sacrifice was accepted. And, but Cain's, God rejected Cain. And, Cain was mad. Cain's like, wait a minute. I offered this sacrifice and you're not accepting it. And he was mad. But, God told Cain as it came be careful sin is at the door and it's knocking it's wanting in and if you give room for it he's getting mad not sin everyone gets mad and even God got uh, mad it's getting mad it's not sin it's how we handle the anger that's sin is we go off and we start, you know, killing people because we're mad. There's where the sin comes in. That's what Cain did. He didn't listen to God's warning. He is so mad. And he was mad at God. But he took it out on Abel. Went out and killed Abel because he was mad at God. Which is something we like to do, don't we? We take it out on other people not who we're really mad at. That. And then Cain, 
was punished. And God's like, hey, Cain, where's your brother? Where is Abel? Now, God knew where Abel was. And Cain's like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not my brother's keeper. Yeah. You find him. I ain't, I ain't responsible. But God already knew. And he's like, Cain, Abel's blood is calling out to me. But, and Cain was punished. And told him, you will live out away from everybody. You be a vagabond. Yeah, nothing, when you grow, you ain't gonna... Anything you grow ain't gonna come up, be plentiful. He's gonna be skimping by, be a scavenger. And Kate's like, oh no, this ain't good. And he's like, someone will kill me. And God put a special. Ew. God put a special mark on Cain so that no one would kill him. Oh. But. And later on, Adam and Eve, they had other sons and daughters. They finally gave birth to Seth. And Seth was a kind of a substitute for Abel. And the Bible says, so, that when Seth was born, it says, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. That's how Genesis 4 and 26. So mankind kind of turned back to God. I was guessing they kind of, everyone kind of walked away from God for a little bit. They started coming back. And then later on, um, seven generations, or six if you come from Seth. Seven generations from Adam through Seth, we get Enoch. And Enoch was special. Now look at Genesis 5.24. Hmm. It says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Uh, God took Enoch. And says, Hey, Enoch... You will not taste death. So, and Enoch walked that close with God. That God's like, hey, I got a special task for you. And Enoch did not see death, at least not here. There's speculation yeah. later. But that's just theory. Oh, that's Revelation's theory. Oh, and we got Enoch, the seventh generation out. So we got the first generation, Adam. Then we got Seth, the second generation they were calling. The seventh generation out, we got Enoch. And then the tenth generation out, you get Genesis 6. Do we know who this might be? Genesis 6, 5 through 6. 5 and 6. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on, was only, thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him in his heart. That's not good. God was upset. Man, time had turned so far away from God. In just ten generations. Turned so far away from God. God's like, I'm sorry I ever made man. But then we look at Genesis 6 and 8. And it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, which is interesting because Noah lived in a generation, a time, where things were so evil that God said, Hey, I'm sorry I ever made man. And things were that evil, but Noah lived for God. But Noah kept living for God, despite it all. And that's what we can do. We can live for God. The nice thing is, is we got church. We got people around that still live for God. So, you guys make sure you keep living for God. You be like Seth, making people want to call on God, or Enoch, walking with God, or maybe you're Noah, or you're finding grace with God, or maybe you're all three. All right. You guys be good, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.